Erev Tov Harim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today it was sad, sad news for Israel as it lost five more soldiers. A, uh, it's been uh, authorized to be released at uh, a, a mortar shell that went off near troops that were on the Gaza border there. Killed four Israeli soldiers today. One died earlier in the day in a battle in Gaza, bringing the death toll now up to 53 IDF soldiers that have been fighting in protective edge. Uh, it was uh, said that uh, they were attempting, the, the Hamas had, had admitted that it was trying to kidnap an IDF soldier uh, in the incident when the four soldiers were killed. One of the one Hamas uh, militant was killed in a, in a gunfire exchange after the mortar went off and killed the other four uh, IDF soldiers. Uh, the names of the soldiers are Sergeant Daniel uh, Kadami, uh, who is 18 from Sefoim. Uh, his funeral will be held on Tuesday at 5 p.m. at the Kirat Sha'al Military Cemetery. Sergeant Barkley uh, Ishe Shor, 21, he was from Jerusalem. Uh, Sergeant Sagi Erez, 19, from Kirat Ata. His funeral will be held on Tuesday at 6 p.m. By the way, it'll be Wednesday at 9 a.m. Uh, for Sergeant uh, Barquet. Uh, also, Sergeant Dor de Rey, 18, from Jerusalem. He will be laid to rest Tuesday at 5 p.m. in the military cemetery on Mount Herzl. Uh, the name of the fifth soldier has not been released for publication as of yet. Uh, our hearts and prayers go out. Uh, earlier in the day today, we had an interview with uh, uh, Sister Esther out of the Golan, uh, who actually came, they came under, uh, uh, sirens were going off, they came under rocket fire in the northern part of Israel. Uh, later, we had discussed that it might, the rockets could have been fired from Lebanon. Uh, however, they had believed that they were actually being fired from Gaza. And which was kind of ironic because she lives north of the Galilee. And so for the rockets to be reaching at that distance from Gaza is quite a feat in itself. There has been, as uh, Sister Esther has reported to us, there has been tensions rising on the Lebanon border with Israel. And there has actually been um, skirmishes uh, already. Some, some missiles have been fired into Israel from there, uh, from, from Lebanon. Uh, believe, supposedly, uh, maybe be, maybe be, uh, may be Hezbollah behind uh, that particular issue there. Uh, other than that, it, it, the battle is still raging in Israel. Uh, tensions are building very, very high between also Turkey and Israel, with them trying to escort with military ships a flotilla in, uh, supposedly for hum humanitarian aid. Uh, uh, and now, now the IDF is, is shelling all along the northeastern uh, part of Gaza as well. Um, just a tremendous thing. Uh, the, uh, the PA uh, is to send a delegation for a ceasefire, for ceasefire talks. Uh, another another uh, article that's being released in Israel's national news. Uh, there's ongoing riots in, uh, down in, uh, throughout the country, actually in Israel. Uh, the, the, as it says on an article here on, on Monday, uh, it says riot rock throwing continues throughout the country as Hamas uh, continued uh, firing rockets at Israel. Arabs continued rioting in the rest of the country uh, as Hamas uh, continued to fire rockets at Israel. There were numerous incidents of rock throwing by Arabs throughout the country. Arabs threw rocks at Israeli drivers on several of the country's main roads, including Road 2, uh, the co coastal highway, Arabs from the uh, village. In fact, Highway 2, that's, that runs right through the heart of Tel Aviv, goes through Herzliya on up through Haifa. So when you have thrown, stones being thrown there, this is in Israeli proper territory. This is not even uh, West Bank or anything like that. Uh, so it's, it's very, very concerning that uh, we have this type of violence going on in Israel. At any rate, though, let's take a look now at what uh, uh, Sister Esther had to say earlier in the day as we recap uh, the events that led when they were departing to go back home to Israel. Uh, her, her family, they're from Israel, uh, but they were returning home uh, to Israel. Uh, and as they were going, I reported this a little while back, uh, about a week or so ago, that they were forbidden to be able to transfer 
funds into Israel. Uh, and of course, it caused a great stir because there were people saying, well, we checked with banks and banks say that you can do it. Well, no doubt maybe some banks are permitting that. But let's take a look and see what Sister Esther had to say about their own experience, as well as about the Jewish people coming in from France. Uh, uh -huh. So, Sister Esther, we want to talk to you a little bit about what you and your husband went through just before going home, because you guys just got back into Israel, uh, and we're doing there in the yeah. first of September ourselves. What was the experiences that uh -huh. you guys had prior to leaving, and as well as when you arrived in Israel, the things that you were hearing there? I mentioned it a little bit on one of our news broadcasts, but, uh, but I wanted to hear it uh, from uh, a sister that actually told it firsthand. Yes, yes, uh, definitely. Well, uh, before we uh, come home to Israel, uh, we did a lot of, uh, you know, preparing to return home uh, to Israel. Uh, we brought uh, lots of pets with us, um, in which we had to uh, uh, pay for uh, the pets, which uh, was not at all cheap. Um, I had family members and friends uh, in the Jewish community that really laid it on me and um, taught me crazy and my husband crazy uh, for returning home to Israel because they uh, felt they feel so safe in America. And I don't know how uh, that can be when... Uh, we all watch uh, the same uh, kind of show or news, and we all hear the same radio. And, uh, and, Amer know, and we, American we, border we is just the same. right. The, Ameri uh -huh. the American border is just wide open right now. I mean, uh, Zach Taylor, a retired uh, Border Patrol officer, who's still in touch with a lot of his men. They did a short little documentary with him recently how that you're only seeing 6% of the people that are coming across the border. He talked about all types of people are coming across. Uh, you're only, they're, they're only seeing yeah. what the humanitarian need is for children to appeal to the American public. But they're actually using this. I've actually heard testimony already that there were transport planes being flown into Mexico, different type transport yeah. planes with Muslims on board to invade the United States for terrorist attacks they here are. in this country. They are um, a big invasion of the U.S. is uh, now taking place, and uh, people are not aware of it. And it's not hard to see. I mean, if you go on to uh, the college uh, campuses, all of the Islamic people are holding up signs saying, do not support Israel. And not only is it the Islamic kids, but our kids are not educated in Torah, in the prophets, uh, in the writings, to know that they should be standing against that and not for it. So just Amen. to be part of a group, they'll join up out of a lack of knowledge with this uh, people because they shout the loudest. And see, if they knew Torah, the Torah would tell them that you do not follow the majority in doing wrong. That's the book of Ben-Nibbar, uh, uh, Deuteronomy. And so uh, these kids are joining with the uh, Muslim children, and not only are they joining with them, but they are traveling across to the Middle East to learn how to be jihadists. Okay? Oh, my gosh. The type of cause they know nothing about. Exactly. Just say exactly. they are part of something. That is it's sad to see, sis. States, yeah. It's very sad. And, okay. and, and the thing is, that the battle is coming to this country here. We have been also it's trying there. to warn the Jewish it's people there. they need to leave, go home. I mean, it sounds, people probably say it sounds nuts. Steve, why would you be encouraging Jewish people to go home to Israel? For one, Mashiach is coming to Israel. Hello. I mean, where yeah. else would you want to be? Yeah. Uh, sister... Uh, uh, the other day, Sister Amy out of Haifa was saying to the people on here, uh, she did a plea to the Jews to return home to Israel. She said, look, where would you rather die? I would, she said, I'd rather die in the <laughs> land of Israel than I would rather die in America because they are going they do, to do a holocaust exactly. here. Exactly. And so this is what uh, the Jewish people are doing. 
the true Jews know and the true Jewish people, this is how they live. We have our people that are coming home to Israel. I saw on the uh, news uh, some young men that are uh, coming to fight for Israel. They've been warned. They have been told that they will be arrested, but yet they still come and stuff. And so, um, you know, people have got to uh, realize that we are at a, a, a battle. We are in a battle all over the globe. And I told uh, Jewish people at my synagogue in the United States, you may choose not to come home to Israel, but the battle is still at your doorstep. And yes. uh, you can die there, or you can die with your people in Israel. And if having a little bit of money and saying that you live in the United States mean that much to you, then you have chosen the, the ways of the world over the Holy One of Israel. To say you are not going to return to Israel and fight for Israel in any way, fighting for Israel don't only mean that you go to war. It means that you are here and you are supporting Israel. And just the very fact that you are walking up and down the street, paying taxes, buying food, you are supporting Israel and you are fighting for Israel just by your very life and you be here. Amen. You know? Amen, so, sis. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so people who don't choose to do that and choose to support the U.S. are choosing uh, Baal, the Vatican, the, 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 the whore of Babylon, over the Holy One of Israel. And it just is cut and dry. You know, now there are those who are in America that want to leave. And Hashem is going to most definitely provide them a way out. Amen. He's going to Amen. open up windows and doors, and his people are getting out of there. He says he will send angels for them. Yes, absolutely. Okay? Just like he sent an angel for Paul when he was in jail, and the angel put all the people to sleep and walked Paul right out through the gates. We may have another time, you know, sis, like is, like Philip in the Bible. And uh, real quick, sis, right. if you would explain, tell the people a little bit about. I know that you guys had trouble with wiring money into Israel from your own that's bank. That's right. That's right. We went to the bank um, to open up our account, and uh, they told us that because of Barack Obama, and I saw this again just yesterday on the news, so it's uh, on CNN, so it is true. Um, uh, if you go to Israel, uh, you are not allowed to take your money. And if you do, uh, they make you pay so high taxes. You have to pay so much in taxes. You like have got to be kidding. But, that yeah. is unreal. So, um, yeah, and he won't let you open up an account over here, uh, if, um, you move to Israel and stuff like that. So, uh, and that's not that's not only here. They're doing it in uh, France and across Europe. The people who leave and come to Israel are having a hard time getting their money. But they can't get the money. What did you guys because hear today, about the, the people that were coming in from France, the Jewish people that were coming in from France? I know that you, were, you had actually knew some of the... Uh, because there's like 400, I believe it was, that came in from yeah. France. And we know yeah. that they're under tremendous stress in France. As Sister they Amy pointed out... Money. The government the government wouldn't let them have the money, you know. I believe that uh, they got um, some kind of committee together who's been working to try and get some of the people's money out of there. But um, hard, bad things are happening in your people. And what... Me and the people in our village here are talking about is that they're going to give the Yehudim abroad in the diaspora, the Galut, uh, opportunity. You can go to Israel, but your money has to stay here. And so the people are going to finally get a choice. You wow. can uh, go to Israel and be free, or you can stay here but you'll be persecuted. 
and you won't have rights like everyday citizens. And this is what we know is going to happen because we have people that are high up in the office and the government of the United States and of these uh, nations are telling Israel this is what they are going to do to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are now becoming a burden on the earth with their ways, they call them. With their way of thinking is what has been told to the state of Israel, that the state of Israel has not told the people because of uh, emotions and stuff like that. You know, Israel, just like the Bible said, is becoming a burden to the earth. Unbelievable. You know? So... Jewish people, oh, they can leave, but the money belongs to um, the country in which it was uh, produced. You know, and what they're going to try and do, I feel, is use Romans against us. Romans 13, we're done to see this, what it is, whatever that. Oh, yes. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, the money that the faith that's on the money is not Israel. It's to whatever country. So they're going to take that money. But you can stay with your money, but you won't be able to use it. You won't be able to buy anything. They're still going to take it. Even if you stay in that country, they're going to take it. What they're doing to Israel behind doors and people are not uh, yet trying to face or experience is pure evil from the bowels of hell. You know? And yes. so many of us, you know, Dean, don't even pay attention. We want to live in a dream that everything is okay, this will pass. It will not pass, Yehudim. And I know you hear, you know, they hear this all throughout history, everywhere they turn to you, and to the United States. It will not pass. This Amen. is here until Mashiach returns. And Amen. you will face it. You're going to face it, and you're going to deal with it. So choose you this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. Amen. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Moshe, Elohe Yahushua, Elohe Koro, El Medin, Shel Yeshua. Oh, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Yeshua, the God yes. of all the Talmudim of Yeshua. That's the one I serve. Amen. Amen. Okay? And I choose right. So they have to choose. They, they're going to have to uh, get it right. Just like the brother down the street said, okay, and a lot of Jewish men are saying, We've got to get it correct this time. At least we've got that part that we know. We have got to get it correct. That's right. We cannot make a mistake this time. That, you know, I'm glad to hear that they are making that type of statement. That shows that their heart says, are, is, is ready to recognize whatever God has a desire for them to know. And that's what he needs. Yeah. He needs he needs our mm -hmm. our people to to be in the right position, the right heart, the right mind to be able to receive him the way God intends for us to to recognize him. So, mm -hmm. and I believe very hard, uh, brother Steve, that our two witnesses um, are here in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I believe that they too. They are about to be revealed. Because, like I said, the water turning to blood, all of the animal deaths, all of these are character or, or traits of what happened in this time. Also, uh, one other point that I think is very important to bring out. Uh, today, the Deputy Transportation Minister, uh, Hodvali, she says uh, no to a yes, U.S. offered ceasefire. In fact, the deputy said in uh, Israel's national news, Obama's ceasefire makes it seem as though the United States is working uh, in the service of Hamas. Uh, very bold statement that she made today, and God bless her for that. The deputy Trans uh, minister, Zippy uh, Hatovali, 
Uh, she's from the Likud party, blasted on Monday the ceasefire offered by the U.S. President Barack Obama, telling Arut Sheva that the offer made it seem as though the United States is working with the service of Hamas. Gaza is far from being uh, de demilitarized. Hamas still has all of the tools of redig the tunnels that produced more rockets, uh, she said, and, who, and she also added this is one of the few military operations in recent years to win broad public support. Almost 90% of Israelis support the continuation of the operation and the completion of the work. National credit for the prime minister is equally as important as international credit, uh, she said. We cannot accept an offer that comes to serve a terrorist organization, she continued. Hamas knows it can grow stronger through its cynical use of humanitarian crisis. We should make clear that there is only one factor that is responsible for the, for the reality in Gaza, and that is that uh, this Hamas government, which was elected by the citizens, not the state of Israel, not the IDF, and not the IAF uh, pilots, it's solely the fault of the public that elected a terrorist organization that uses it as human shields. Uh, uh, you need a really very interesting article. You should continue on to read that. But anyway, I'm Stephen Ben Danun. We thank you for uh, watching tonight, Israeli News Live. Baruch Hashem, definitely please pray for Israel. Israel needs it more than ever. Shalom.